I mean, it's crazy talk, right? It's crazy talk to think that they could make better than this with this. Did they? Stay tuned. So first things first, let's take a look at the can. Beautiful, gold, like a brass look to it. And you have the name of the fragrance on the front. I mean, it's standard stuff, the tin can that they come in. I'll well pop it open to show you guys. The bottle sits in just like that, but I mean, it is nicer than the boxes that you typically see. Now let's talk about this bottle. Let's take a moment to admire this. So it has that same, same you can hear that through the mic. That same texturing that's on the can, glass see-through in the stripes, and you have an interesting key ring for the neck atomizer stopper protector, however you want to call it. It's, it's a bit nicer than the standard fare, I have to say. This, this bottle, they did some good work here. Fragrance information on the bottom. Their standard atomizer, which is great. Let's talk about the scent though. I have Parfumo and Fragrantica's notes on screen because it's a little conflicting and when you smell it, you do get a little of both, but it sucks. All right, have a good night, guys. I'm just kidding. So naturally, this is a lot of people's favorite. Le Mans Le Parfum. So I, I've had a bunch of people already ask me, how similar are they? Well, they're both powdery, they are. But this is floral powdery. This is much more powdery. This is a designer iris. This is tonka bean powdery. It's sweet, but it's a little more refined. This is actually a louder fragrance, which we'll get into in just a little bit. But in the opening, it smells like Lamal. The lavender vanilla combo without the mint. I mean, you get a little bit of the mint, but not like traditional Lamal. That's very minty. This little tone of some green freshness that now, isn't even necessarily distinctively mint, but supposedly there's a mint note in there. It just doesn't dominate the fragrance. What does dominate this fragrance, that's why I kind of believe what I'm seeing with the tobacco on one of the note breakdowns, because there is an earthiness. This, th this honey benzoin vanilla tobacco type accord is almost like a chocolatey tobacco smell the way it comes across. I know that's kind of weird when I say vanilla, but the way the honey mixes with the tobacco and the vanilla the combination offers almost a little bit of a chocolatey, powdery type of accord. I have the very deep dry down at this stage on my skin. I've been wearing it all day. I've been testing it since yesterday. This is lovely. They did a good job. This is one of the most anticipated designer releases of 2023, and they did a good job. Now, you'll see comparisons to One Million Royal. I only smelled that once and it's been a few months, so I don't remember distinctively, but I want to say there is similarity. I don't remember it being powdery like this. Now, when I bring up the powdery tone of this, it's not super powdery. Again, Le Mal Le Parfum is a much more powdery fragrance than Le Mal Elixir. There is some slight redundancy here, but this is more warm, spicy, and floral, waxy, powdery, whereas this is more sweet, soft, powdery, a little earthy, and the benzoin here offers a little bit more of like a warm, it, it like adds to the honey really, because it's more of a gourmand than you may think going into it. And believe it or not, it's not the heaviest fragrance. Obviously this is not gonna be a great choice for the summertime, but in the evenings, a couple of sprays going to dinner, I know I'm gonna wear it, because it smells fantastic. This is an experience that's gonna be worth having. Now, I did blind buy this at full retail. I bought it on eBay for 125 for 75 ml plus $12 shipping. Paid one, I forgot what it was after tax. Um, 140 something after tax, but I paid a premium for it to get it early and not wait for it to get the discounters one day maybe at some point down the line because I was very excited when this one got announced. Very excited. Now, I got to say, it not necessarily exceeds my expectations, but it at minimum 
met my expectations for this because it does tie into the DNA. It does smell like a version of Lamal. I think they got it right for an elixir version of Lamal. It's not absurdly powerful like, say, a Sauvage elixir. We have to relate the elixirs. One million elixir, much sweeter than this. This is still gourmand sweet, like you would expect when you see the notes, but I think this earthy tone that I believe there has to be the tobacco note in here, I believe that to be true because it does smell like it's in there. And the honey vanilla combo, it's thick, it's creamy sweet, not syrupy sweet, but it's also not too sweet. There are much, much sweeter, thank Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal and Scandal of Parfum, for example, much sweeter fragrances from the house than this. I know I'm kind of giving you quite a bit here, but I'm really trying to paint a picture on what I get from this one because I think it's fantastic. I made the prediction of this being one of the top three designer releases of the year. And where I stand with the little bit of time I've spent with this one so far, I would say so far for me that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum coming in tomorrow at the recording of this video. The day this video goes live, it comes in. That's got potential to be up there as well. But this, I think, was a welcomed addition. A lot of shoes to fill with something like this being a previous release because this is masterfully done. This is fantastic for those of you that like iris, like powdery, any of that stuff. This is seduction in a bottle right here. It's gorgeous. This is on that level, but warmer and more delicious. Not as powdery, but still powdery. This must try. Now performance. So long and strong, not super strong again. This is brighter in the projection. I would say projection here is maybe a little bit better than average for the first hour, hour and a half into the two hour mark even. Then it settles into a moderate sillage. You will get nice whiffs of this one throughout the remaining life of it. It's not light little hits. Um, this one has some power. This is a pretty stout fragrance, and I think it's because of the heft of the oils that were used, not just necessarily the oil concentration, and then 10 to 12 hours solid. I mean, I'm at the 11 hour mark of this wearing, and it's still, still going strong. It is not faint. It's good, so it's easily going to be a 12 plus hour fragrance, so I think it's going to be safe to place this in the 10 to 12 hour range. Um, this is an exciting release. Granted, you have to like lightly powdered. You like you have to like creamy and sweet. You have to like a little bit of a gourmand facet, but it still has the core DNA of the lavender, the mint, and the vanilla. It's Lamal. That's the main thing I was looking for. Are they gonna make what I would consider an elixir version of Lamal? I think they did it here, and the performance matches. It's not absurdly powerful, but it's not going to disappoint anyone. It is very strong the board. Well, final thoughts on Lamal Elixir. It's everything I hoped it would be. It's everything I hoped it would be. It does tie into the DNA. It does have some more sweet facets without being too sweet. I didn't want playfully sweet. This actually has a little bit more refinement to it for being gourmand sweet. It's not super youthful. I don't place this in the one million and the scandal Le Parfum type of sweetness, where those are more juvenile, youthful, playful, fun, sweet type of fragrances, whereas this is kind of a, I would say, 25 plus type of sweet fragrance. Um, sure, younger, younger fellas below 25 years old, I'm sure can enjoy this one as well, but I think the earthy tones here just kind of smooth things out and just overall round out the aroma. This is a stunning fragrance. I think it's an outstanding release. If I had a hat on, I would take it off for Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, I think this was a great move for them. Fantastic move. This is 9 out of 10. Outstanding. Big fan. With that said, now I need Le Beau Elixir. Well, that's my thoughts and feelings on the newest release in the Lamal line from Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is the Elixir Flanker. Bravo. Well done. This is good stuff, guys. You're going to want to try this. Uh, I got, Like I said before, I bought it on eBay. I checked Jean-Paul Gaultier's website. I couldn't buy it directly from them like I did with Spice Bomb Infrared EDP. I bought that directly from Victor and Rolf. 
So not that easy to get in the States yet. There are ways. Check eBay. You're going to pay premiums for this right now as it's just recently come out. But I got to tell you what, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to enjoy this fragrance. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Fearing some redundancy? Have no fear because they're different enough. While they're very similar, they share the DNA. There's just as many differences as there are similarities. I'm so glad to have both of these. These are both so good. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on the Mall Elixir and you give it a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later because you'll know what you're going into. It's that good. Have a good one, guys.